living with it. So sometimes those stories or when we find out that we might have been living out of alignment can feel so much for our bodies to take in. And then we might get stuck in like a freeze space yeah, because yeah, it's exactly. almost like our nervous system is like trying to deal like I get it logically but yeah. my body is like how do I and hopefully you know this is so familiar bit, this out of alignment yes. so familiar that it's hard to to know what that feels like and when you I, that flip it of a second when you do get yeah. in alignment it's like oh, oh. <laughs> yes yes and it, yes. is it safe to stay there like our body yeah. needs to relearn that so thank you for like sharing such a important crucial part of you know yes. recognizing when we're out of alignment but also it's not that easy to just go back into it welcome to whole and unleashed a podcast about coming home to ourselves. I'm your host, Jessica Locke, a holistic mindset, strala yoga, and human design guide. This podcast is not about telling you what to do. It's about sharing stories and tools to connect to your inner wisdom and maybe give you an extra nudge towards living wholeheartedly. Because deep down, only you know what's best for you. We'll be talking mindset, business, recovering from burnout, human design, transitions, and so much more. Let's dive in, shall we? Hello, hello. It's been a minute. I am settling back in Canada after a week in London with my family. It was my brother-in-law's wedding and it was so much fun, so beautiful, and so nice to be able to meet the rest of his family. And I'm also exhausted after all the travel and a little bit of jet lag. (laughs) So bear with me as I record this intro. A big theme that has been unfolding in my life for the past couple of years and months has been around that, around relationships, boundaries. It has been around healing and generational trauma, unpacking that. And it wasn't something that I was like intentionally I'm going to get into it. I'm going to move through it. It just happens. And I think even in my astrology chart, this is something, a big topic that's unfolding in the cycle of my life. I don't know enough (laughs) to be able to expand on that, but wanted to pop in in between all these life things to share this expansion session that was recorded in the summer of 2023 right now as i'm recording the intro is may 2024 so almost like a year since this episode was recorded with stacy who's a one three eco projector and this is one of the episodes where listening back i cringe at myself i was overly excited a little bit hyper there were things I should have said or now listening back other areas that I would have wanted to focus and at the same time knowing that this is part of growth because I'm sure that if I listened to every episode I've recorded or reread every post I've ever written there will be things I would change right away simply because of where I'm at currently because of how much I've learned and grown and we're always changing right so (sighs) trying to release the perfectionism and also hold on to I did my best I'm doing my best and I know that there is value hopefully I just find myself a little bit annoying (laughs) but please share if you have any observations (laughs) any thoughts around this episode So Stacy wrote in, I seriously feel like I got the short end of the stick in this lifetime. I'm a 1-3 projector, ego authority, single definition. I know the basics of human design and a bit more. I love running people's charts and seeing their expression when I mail it with just that little bit. Everybody seems to have those aha moments and more positive things to discover. I don't. My chart kind of sucks which i am tired of and being a stepping stone for people to step on my head and move onward and upward and i get to stay here and waiting to be invited to the next step 
pretty sure my answer was way more witty the first time but once you see my chart you'll get the joke so stacy wrote in filling the form and i think <laughs> it must have canceled on her so she had to rewrite it again and what is stacy looking for this is what she also shared i want to find clarity in why i sign up for this lifetime if all i was promised is a short end of the stick i know me I know that would even have appeal to my higher selfless self. There has to be more to it because I'm tired. If I chose this path, then I certainly didn't think much of myself. So why would I think anyone else does? I'm tired of being an empath, projector, and all the other things that feel everybody else's stuff and can help them be better. Yet I struggle to relate to anything other than their struggles. This is the end of her message. and. There's a lot to unpack, a lot to move through, especially when we're in this space. And bitterness as a projector, it is our shadow self. It is a sign when we are out of alignment. It is our quote unquote not self theme after all. Again, hesitations of using not self because I feel like the shadows, even this part is a part of us. Perhaps that's the part of our journey to come back to ourselves, seeing what's beneath the bitterness, beneath the pain, beneath all the stories, all the narratives that are filtering through how we see the world, especially for Stacey, who also happens to be a vessel of love, someone who can love so many people, show compassion, but having difficulty receiving or acknowledging it in herself. And in this session, I really wanted to create a safe space for Stacy to settle in. You know, it is our first time meeting and then she is here to unravel a lot of things. So you might notice a lot of mental energy that's just moving through. That's okay. Nothing wrong with it. And we also get to see like the scripts that are being written or the scripts that are running the way that she sees herself, her life and how it dims her inner guidance, her ego, her own self-trust and intuition. There is so much to weave through and obviously one session won't be enough to cover it all or to unpack it all, but isn't this part of life, right? (laughs) Isn't this part of the healing? Almost the awareness of like, okay, those are the parts that we are out of alignment. How do we slowly recalibrate and come back to ourselves especially when now in speaking more as a personal experience when we find ourselves in those spaces where there's not a lot of self-trust there is bitterness there is resentment there is anger there is grief and i really want to say or anybody who's listening who's a projector or knows a projector i want to offer you compassion this is the point of these series is the point of my work because sometimes we can be so hard on ourselves if anything we're usually harder on ourselves more than the people around us the expectations we have for ourselves and not being able to meet them and how that energy can start to spiral and almost eat into us if that's proper english at all and it's not always easy to almost see outside of ourselves to see what others see in in us especially as projectors we talk about recognition and how important that is because this is how we move energy the recognition is like the energetic cue that our energy is being received that our energy is doing what it's meant to do but if there is no recognition from the people around us or even from ourselves that's when things start to get more blurry because us projectors we're here to guide and guiding can happen in many different ways guiding can happen through art through storytelling through coaching sessions through teaching through just being ourselves guiding isn't just sitting here and like moving energy with someone guiding can happen through a conversation and The recognition is really what helps us 
see its permission to move this energy. We're designed to see deeply into the other, but not to ourselves. Isn't this the biggest <laughs> cosmic joke of all? But I think it's also a reminder that we need each other, that no matter what design we have, we are communal beings. Some might spend more time basking in their individuality. Others might need more time connecting with people, moving through different auras. But that doesn't change the fact that we are all human and we all have needs and we all need each other. So I hope this episode serves as a reminder for everyone, but especially projectors, that about the importance of having people in our lives or being communities and spaces where we are truly seen, where we can safely be ourselves and process and be reflected back to ourselves because in order to be a successful projector, we have to be able to see ourselves from different perspectives, from different lenses that we don't necessarily see ourselves because we're so tunnel vision, so focused on sometimes the other or so focused on the things that didn't work out or so focused on our shadow expressions, but just having the right spaces can create such a difference. So some of the highlights of this episode with Stacy was talking about her fear of being competitive, feeling lost at 54, her expectations that she should be further or that she should know. And a side note, notice whenever the shoulds become so loud. Notice throughout the episode, notice in your own life, whenever there's a should, ask yourself, where is the should coming from? From yourself? From the people around you? From society? How does the should feel in your body when you say that? How does that truth feel? Does it feel like an excel or almost like you have to hold your breath because it's not something that necessarily belongs to you? but you're forcing yourself to, to wear, to fit in. Now back to the highlights. Stacey also shared how she's very capable of lifting, lifting others up, but difficulty in lifting herself up. She doesn't trust her gut. She feels like she doesn't know herself. And something that also came up is like, how do we allow ourselves to feel good when we are aligned? when we are so used to the comforts of being misaligned there is comfort there because it's what we know we know how life is when we're so dysregulated that feeling at ease feeling relaxed might feel like something's wrong talking about fear we also talk about the fear of mistakes of doing things quote unquote wrong we talk about her vessel of love what is love how does loving ourselves look like? And how healer also needs healing. There's so much more that we explore. Come join us. And without further ado, here's the episode with Stacy. Hi, Stacy. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Thank you. How are you feeling? <laughs> I'm feeling good. Thank you so much for offering this. So I'm so excited to dive in. I know you're like, just tell me all you know about my chart, let's but do it. <laughs> let's do it. I wanted to get a little bit of background. I know you filled up the form a month ago about where you're at. You shared that we have like similar situations. Where are you now, right now? What are you holding? Um, right. What am I holding? I'm just kind of like stuck and I have been stuck in a place where I don't, I, I, I'm a massage therapist and so I've done a lot of hands-on healing and stuff, but I realized that I needed to do the work on myself, you mm -hmm. know, because it was kind of cool just figuring out I was an empath and then, you know, the projector thing and all that kind of, that's really cool. And then you're, then it's just like, oh, I don't want to. <laughs> and I kind of had to realize I've got to work on myself and I just haven't been able to kind of move past that. You know, it's almost like I've shut my empath stuff down and just that desire to kind of be a part of the world I guess really because I just don't know my place you know mm -hmm. I'm 54 so I've you know I've worked in the corporate world and I quit that many many years ago to do massage and then just kind of you know it was such a different 
drastic change, but definitely I feel at home here. It's yeah. just, I, I don't know how to, you'd think at 54, I'd know which direction to go or like listen to my internal instincts or just know a little bit about, I'm just seems so confusing. And that's why mm -hmm. human design interests me so much because it, the few things that I do know about it, it's like, that makes sense. It kind of gives me something to go, Hey, <laughs> I'm not crazy. Or something. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Oh, thank you for, you know, sharing us about where, where you're at. And I think no matter what age, it's easy to say that easier said than done, but like a lot of people don't know where they're going like me even now like I might feel grounded I still don't know where I'm going with it so sometimes those stories or when we find out that we might have been living out of alignment can feel so much for our bodies to take in and then we might get stuck in like a freeze space yeah, because yeah, it's exactly. almost like our nervous system is like trying to deal like I get it logically but yeah. my body is like how do I and hopefully you know this is so familiar bit. this out of alignment yes. so familiar that it's hard to to know what that feels like and when you I, that flip it of a second when you do get yeah. in alignment it's like oh, oh. <laughs> yes yes yeah. and it, yes. is it safe to stay there like our body yeah. needs to relearn that so thank you for like sharing such a important crucial part of you know yes. recognizing when we're out of alignment but also it's not that easy to just go back into it because how does it look like if we haven't been doing right. this for the longest time and to add a little bit of a context you're a one three uh ego projected yeah. projector which is also very very rare what do you understand from this you're like what does it mean I'm rare <laughs> no I know I do because I've heard that before and I'm like well of course and it's not rare in a good way it's rare yeah. like the emotional kind of like yeah <laughs> yeah yeah you're like I mean, that's what I want to do is my life. more yeah and I want to know yeah. like what's the struggle why is the struggle so maybe I can get through it because right, I do feel right. like life is a struggle and yeah. I'm trying to deal with that. I'm supposed to be making mistakes, but I'm a perfectionist. So making mistakes does not work well. And it's oh, like yes. all the things that I'm supposed to be living in alignment with. It just doesn't, you know, right. don't know it's how to so do it. Hard. Oh, oh, this is like a good segue to dive into your one, three profile. Yes, <laughs> <So>, please. <laughs> yes. The first line is the investigator. And we often talk about it. People who've been listening <laughs> to the podcast will hear the house analogy often. I can share it again if you haven't heard it before yes. where like the investigator is really the one in the hexagram the six lines they're the foundations they're the researchers they're the investigators so mm -hmm. they really want to make sure that they have a strong foundation so how you move around the world you love diving into like rabbit holes you love being prepared like love. you need to be prepared like this is your safety but the first line also has it's almost like this encouraging energy of insecurity like it feels like it never knows enough it which yes, is and that just yeah yeah yes, which is I what drives them totally. to be such a great investigator such a great authority because one lines are here to be an authority even though you might not feel like one because you're like there's more I need to know right and, and I do feel uncomfortable I do feel uncomfortable with that when I'm when I'm seen for whatever it is that I need to know it's hard for me to like even to be that the head not necessarily the head but maybe the center or something like that yeah. I, I used to maybe I had more confidence and thought that that was okay place to be but in where I'm at now it's you know I'd rather just kind of stay back even though I know you know what might be helpful or whatever but I, I'm just like definitely putting it in the wrong places and you know not um, focusing where like what's important I guess what right. my knowledge what's important what I need to learn I'm just kind of all over the place right right when you mean that it's safer to like stay back what do you mean by that do you care can you elaborate if you're comfortable um, yeah I feel like I'm I've really turned in kind of into an introvert like I'm afraid I'm going to say the wrong thing I, mm -hmm. I watch I'm really careful about what I say there's just not really a time in an environment that I'm a relaxed unless I do know what I'm talking about but not having that corporate world anymore you know right so I don't I don't really have one thing to focus on. So I just, I would, I don't like that attention. Or if I do start saying something, I don't feel like people hear me because I can literally mm. say stuff and like people won't hear me. So it's, right. you know, so it's right. either I put myself in that position or I'm in that position always, but it's like, that's, I feel like not yeah. that, that center, the director, I guess. Right. Right. And especially as a projector where the recognition is important and the invitation and, yeah. you know, when we're in the wrong places, which happens all the time, because not everyone and everywhere is for us. Right. 
how like you know and then our minds get tripped up it's like so how do we put ourselves in a place where we get the proper recognition yes how do we right it's, we got to be doing like, something <laughs> yes yes it's like <laughs> our minds are like okay let's solve it if we can see the problem there you know quote-unquote problem um so when you have received recognition in the past when you were able to share something and it kind of flowed out of you do you remember do you have memories I can. of these I, things happening? Before I even knew about human design, I think that that was, you know, like definitely in the corporate world, I mm -hmm. think that, you know, I def I knew what to focus on. And then I was definitely seen for my, you know, seen for what I'd learned and what I could share. I was mm -hmm. never really a teacher, but definitely someone that had something to offer to the, offer to whatever it was. So I, way before I knew what human design was, I do think I was living in alignment to a certain extent with the investigator for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now like with your current profession, do you feel like you're not able to share more? Um, right, because I see I've kind of I've got the same clients and you know, some people want to stay broke or whatever. And so I just feel like it's kind of it's more of a routine now than mm -hmm. when I get new clients, then I do kind of get that exhilaration and then like, okay, I can do something with it. But I've even stopped myself from like going to continuing education classes and stuff like not stop myself, but I just haven't felt the desire or whatever so yeah. I think you know I don't know why I think at 54 I should have already known everything because there's really so much more life to live and I'm having a hard time yeah. still thinking that that you know there's I can be educated at 99 it doesn't matter right. there's, you know to not put that such stress on how old I am I guess right right I think there's definitely a tension and it could definitely be like a subconscious belief that we've mm -hmm. taken on and logically we're trying to like unravel our way but because it's so deep and hopefully maybe you know as we continue to talk maybe we can like yeah. you know touch the core or like peek at it from where it's coming from but we can always find it through other ways where we're not you know trying to look at like why do I feel this right now so you know yes. okay I spend a yeah. lot of time in that why do I feel that why 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 spend a lot of time oh in that yeah you have like in your chart you have a completely open head crown center I know <laughs> yeah, so that center, you're going to get so much pressure amplifying that. And sometimes these questions can lead to beautiful quests and directions without leading to the actual answer. But the more we try to find the answers and we're noticing that we're going in circles, there must the less be they're an answer. <laughs> yes. There must be. So, there must be. Yeah. But maybe the answer doesn't come in mental form. Maybe it comes through a connection or conversation with someone. Maybe it comes when we least expect it. And, and that's true. And, and those are things that I need to hear because just like the making mistakes, I'm my design is made to make mistakes and learn oh, from those mistakes. Yes. And that how is, does that, that make you feel? Oh, it's, it's so <laughs> difficult. It's so hard because yeah. I'm a perfectionist. And so it really it makes me feel like I'm um I'm like, of course, I'm gonna mess up, you know, like I, why can't I get this or whatever? It's like yeah. I never feel like the like I've mastered something, I guess. Mm -hmm. Because I haven't been, you know, accepting my mistakes as a platform to to go, okay, so I know not to do that again. I haven't been looking at it like that. And I've really shifted it within the last, well, I got your book. And so I've kind of started going through your book and something just helped me like shift a little bit and just go, yeah. okay, you know. I'm supposed to make mistakes, but don't keep making the same mistakes and get frustrated. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. try to learn from that. So whether that be write it down so I don't do the same thing over and over right, again, or right. I'm not sure. Mm, it's the third line. So, you know, now going towards like the other part of the house, the third line, this is the, <laughs> the other difficult going, one. <laughs> the other, it's not difficult. It's just, I think these energies are so opposing in a way. It's beautifully like, you know, when they're together and they're in flow, but it also causes so much tension to each other. Your first line is yes. like, let me feel stable. Let me stay cooped up and read and do my research yes. while the third line is like, I'm pulling you out of there. And your third line is in your body side, your, your unconscious, your subconscious side. Okay. So your third line is like, okay, I'm going to be bumping into people, into things that do not work literally, but you yeah. also have a resiliency. So in the house metaphor, the third line is a person that's like running up and down the stairs. They're like, okay, let's take the teachings, the wisdom of the first and the second line. And like, let's break it. You know, this beautiful that bus so that was engineered by, I don't know how many hours of research. I'm gonna break it. <laughs> yep, that definitely. But the purpose I of that really is to like, okay, so it broke. So how can I create another material? And I know sometimes, you know, the reframe or what people say is like, what if you look, um, 
look into your failures, your mistake as data. I don't know if that's yeah. supportive. Like, how do you feel? That might you help. Hear yeah. That? yeah. Um, hearing as data, I'm really trying to like also concentrate on our, I think you said a few things to that. Our brain is just kind of the computer and it's, so I, I would give it way too much, too, too much of a job, you know, like yeah. the emotions, everything like that. And I'm trying to, to remove, I'm trying to just make it be simple. So when you say that I can relate, that helps me kind of think of it differently. But other than that, you know, it's like my brain, it just defeats me. It like beats me up (laughs) is what happens instead of saying that it's just data. It's just like, you dummy. Yes. Yes. Especially, I think so much of our conditioning is also important, like especially our upbringing and how our parents, our caregivers, the adults reacted when we made a mistake. And that's, you know, it can be a very tender place to go to. Something that I struggle personally was that I felt like I had to earn my parents' love. I felt like I had to be an A-star student. And that took so much out of me because I'm not good at math. I'm not good, but I had to prove myself to them. Right. And did you though? Because for me, I had a twin sister and that's her. Tracy is like, she, she's the, if there were ever a contest, I would never win. And so I kind of just like, whatever, you know, so I, you know, and I'm the baby out of five. So I kind of already got the, the approval and stuff like that. So really I kind of, I let her to be the superstar as far as that goes, because she's so driven to Mm -hmm. like win everything and to succeed. And, you know, she's, that's a whole nother story. But so I kind of, I don't think I ever really gave anything my all. I did, but not like the full potential in a lot of areas because I already, I didn't really, I already got that um, approval from just because I was the baby. So I probably used that to my advantage more so than I should have, but. Yeah, I love that you brought that up. So your twin sister, what is your, uh, the time difference that you were born? Was it very 15 minutes. 15 she minutes. was born 15 minutes before me. So oh, I I'm, tried to pull our charts up to yeah, see what yeah, the yeah. difference was, but it'd be curious to see what exactly, because we are so different. different. Oh, but sometimes living with someone that has your same chart, but because that person might excel in a different area causes us to react differently. That's what I was thinking. Cause there's always a, a light and a dark. There's always that opposites that, you know, yes. that belong to that same thing. So I'm, yeah. I do see that where one of us is like weaker than the others is stronger. And so we definitely have that kind of a, a balance and sometimes it can be great. And sometimes it can be not so great. So. Oh, I'm like, <laughs> just like editing your chart to see how much it changes oh, yeah. in 15 minutes. And you like, not a lot change you have the same channels but it is very possible so let's talk a little bit about you know your only centers defined which is the ego and the identity center the 25 51 and the 51 coming from the ego it's all about shocking it's known as the gate of shock it's here to basically it has the ability to like bring you into new heights like shock yourself into new heights you might have gone through things in life that nobody like regular joe doesn't go through you know yes. you probably have stories that like what the hell this happened to you but how did you come out of it so that's the 51 it's really here to shock and it looks for the 25 which is in, in the identity center to kind mm-hmm. of um it looks for the spirit who is the right spirit like who do i shock like who can receive this energy <laughs> like okay. who is able to like initiate what is this direction you know the the 51 is very competitive and it's very possible that having a that's my sister, twin <laughs> right that was so competitive and all that made you want to shrink yourself unconsciously yes. Yeah, I, I do believe that. And even with the partners that I pick or the partner that I'm with, you know, my husband, he is the superstar in the show, you know, and I don't have, you know, and I'm kind of, yeah. Right, right. So, and it's, and you having this consistently, this consistent energy to very much <clears throat> compete with them if you want to, but feeling that perhaps you don't know enough or like your trial and error trying to almost like thinking that you're not enough. Yes, not yes, that's allowing a big you thing. to express that energy properly. It's almost like, let me shrink myself because I'll never be like them. Yep. I feel like my whole entire life, every relationship that I have, everything that I have is, is you know, the justice scales, you know, like a lawyer scale, <gasps> everything is this, like, it doesn't matter what it is, friendships, relationships, um, you know, everything's the scale. I'm either higher or I'm lower, but I never feel like I'm like in this, where the scales are balanced with 
anybody or anything. So, yeah. and that, and that's constantly in the back of my mind, you know, so right. there's always like that bitterness of course comes out, but it's always like, I always feel either lesser or more than, and, and it, neither one of them is a good place to be. Like, right. you it know, I don't want to feel better to than, yeah, at all. I don't want to be better than somebody else. And I don't want to be less than somebody else. So it's a constant, you know, of me, judge me, um, trying to gauge where I'm at with that. Wait, ooh, okay. So the 51, it's this competitive <clears throat> energy from the ego and it wants to prove themselves. It wants to be better in a way, not to necessarily put others down, but because it wants to initiate themselves and others into new heights. And okay. Do you feel like when this energy comes out, is there a little bit of some stories or judgment or discomfort around it? I feel like I'm, I can, I can lift anybody up. I feel like I'm great. If, I think that might be what we're talking about. I can, I've got, but it's always on the negative side. Like I'd like to be a part of the happy and um, happy vibration instead of, it's always like I can find and dive into that, the negative part, and then I can encourage them. But mm -hmm. I find that there's this glass wall that I hit that I don't go past, you know, or ceiling, yes. glass ceilings. So I can get them past it. And then I'm like, well, there they go, stepping on my head and moving on, you know, yeah, you're like, let me lift like, you and like, basically, yes, initiating and them. Here. yeah, initiating them into new heights, but not, perhaps not recognizing yourself. Yes. And that's also like a the big wording. projector wound like not recognizing ourselves because of our upbringing or just feeling the not enoughness and I think it's possible that you know you're one it's like please don't like get me out of this and your third line is like but we need to try it and then yeah. also having you know maybe your twin sister excelling in things that are like okay so who am I to step right into that yeah 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 definitely where she's taking on that so there's really no room for me to have that in our yeah like yes even though we're we're two separate people and we do kind of live our life separately it's not like we're, we hang out and stuff a lot but so I, I can still you know I just still need to learn that everything within me I have that so. yeah yeah but I think it's like you know it's a normal reaction because we react to our environment we react to our upbringing and you know just because we logically understand that physically right. we might not feel safe to step into yeah. that road Yes. Yeah. And it's okay to feel bitter. Sometimes it's okay. And sometimes it's just a matter of allowing those feelings to be felt. Yeah, I guess I do need to allow that. I feel like I'm that all the time. So I, I think if I allow it, then it's just like, I'm accepting of that ugliness or whatever, but mm. but you're right. Cause I do know in order for it to leave, yeah. I need to accept it and, you know, yeah. where it's at. And it's not, <clears throat> it's not, ugliness if I could you know reflect back on you because I see so much compassion and love that you have for so many people but with ourselves something that they say very very often for projectors is that we're so good at recognizing other people but we don't see ourselves clearly we don't and especially you know with our death with our ability to see into others we don't really see ourselves which is why recognition from others is so important finding somebody who really understands where you're at it's okay yeah. that you're feeling all of these things because when we feel like we could be like a quote-unquote better version of ourselves versus where we're at right now and we our nervous system feels almost uneasy to be in the now it's almost that vulnerability like, yes the vulnerability of being scene of being accepted when we might not necessarily accept yeah, ourselves for sure scary. But yeah that's it, you're right I mean because how is how can somebody else accept us if I'm if in in the here I'm not accepting myself so yeah, yeah. definitely and it's are possible. you a projector also I'm yeah yeah I'm a projector I'm Good. a four six projector and I have my spleen and my ego defined so I understand the ego of like wanting to prove but the way my ego is defined is through like gate 26. And it's all about, you know, oh, what does the community need? What does um the it's tribal, a community chat? It's a tribal, yes. And yours, the through the 51 is individual. It's almost like, how can I initiate myself into new heights? But then you can also put yourself in like very high standards because you know yes. you're capable of doing more. And this is a beautiful energy, but also how do we not 
it's so conflicting though is it's it so not? conflicting I mean, right how do you yeah, not so. turn that into ourselves and make us feel less than when we it's almost like we know our wholeness we know our light but then all these like logical understanding of it yeah. it's like no don't go yeah. there you're not good it's like enough. I don't want to prove it how do I have, I have to prove it to everybody or I have to explain exactly. myself I do feel like I'm always having to explain myself when I'm not nobody's asked me to I just start yeah. explaining myself <laughs> right it could also be like your solar plexus is undefined right so you might even sense the comfort from other people like your empathy yes. and then want yeah. to compensate that's the projectors like it's our wisdom and it's also like our weakness because we with our penetrating or literally work and I always use yes. this, like tentacles like reaching into people's energetics yes that's why we need the recognition to guide them and move that energy but for ourselves you know when we retract those tentacles it's almost like we take pieces of them with us so yeah knowing when it's like oh I'm like amplifying someone's feelings they might be you know, feeling confused about what I just shared, or I might have triggered someone without knowing, and then feeling that it's our fault and responsibility. Yes, all the time. Yeah, that's why. But I think I, my thing that I filled out, I'm like, I'd like to just feel like at ease and relaxed in like a party environment, or you know, when people are just around hanging out and stuff like that. But I'm always feeling that I'm like, oh gosh, I, I don't want to reach too deep, or I don't want to get yeah. too serious, or be like, oh my gosh, they're getting too serious with me. There's no, I don't know how to. Yeah, I don't yeah, want to be yeah. that all the time. So Ooh. yeah, and, I, and if I am, then I need to learn how to accept it and so try to. <laughs> right, <laughs> just... right. And that's when the mind goes in like, well, if this is who you are, accept it. But then our, you know, our other parts is like, but how? But I'm still in, feeling the discomfort. And like 51 Gate of Shock, it's really here to shock people. <laughs> it okay. is here to. So that's my job. All right. <laughs> I know. So like knowing that, how do you still stay grounded and not feel insecure about doing that it's almost like you you could say like I went to buy bread and somebody's like what <laughs> you know I don't know I'm just right. giving like a really blank statement it's almost like the energy behind it what you do shocks them in a way and that can awaken them to their own spirit to their own path yes I am brutally honest I feel yes. like just because where I'm at in my life I just feel like I don't want to like I don't have time to not but I did realize that a lot of people like a lot of people don't need to hear what I have to say so that's been a really good thing for me but so I don't have to tell just because I can see it but yeah, I, yeah. And, and but even when somebody does well people know they'll get the truth from me so they know yeah. the people around me know to either ask me or not ask me so see so, but, I love that it's like, almost like inviting you or not right do you want the yeah. brutal truth or not and that has the capacity to awaken others and in yourself as well it's almost like you might be fascinated to venture into the unknown. Your path is probably anything but conventional. You know, I, I, but that's just it. I think I am choosing that more. Like I have this, a lot of fear in me too. So I have, yeah. there's a lot of fear that comes up and I think that stops me from a lot mm. of things. So I know there's so much more that I should be doing in that like you're saying that the three is just there. And I do feel that inside of me that wants to adventure and I have great thoughts and stuff like that, yeah, yeah. but I just, there's a, this fear of everything. That also yeah. Is, yeah. Like feeling too. it all and like amplifying the fears. Like, is it going to work? Is it not going to work? And the questions that aren't being taught yeah. and your three is like, let's run. So technically the mechanics of all these energies, you already know more than you think you do. You might not feel like it. You might not feel like it, but you know more than you think you do, especially with the first line. It's almost like you're always investigating. You're always strengthening your foundation. And with the third line, you might have already made mistakes and then use that data to improve. It's okay to feel fear. Feeling the fear doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. It's okay. It's almost like when we realize our sensitivity and how we're feeling all of these things, we think that we haven't been living wrong we haven't been you know we've been operating right so how do we do things right now but we move yeah. from the mind I know oh yes that's because that's where my anxiety gets to me you know the mind does definitely wreak havoc on everything so it's yeah yeah but it's a beautiful tool it's just learning how to when to share and when that energy comes so yeah. you know knowing the tension of the three of like trying do you have any experiences in the past that you remember where you try something for the sake of before you found human design, before anything, and either didn't work out, but then it led to somewhere else? 
not that I can remember because I'm so hard on myself that, mm. you know, I really am hard on myself. So if it's, if I didn't do something well, then it, and, you know, I just never attempted it again. And yeah. I wouldn't even be able to relate if there was something good that came from it because it's just such a downer right. for me. Yeah. So yeah, it's almost like you just focus on what didn't work and things that work. Yeah. Your brain is like, let's, and I take it so it. personally. Yep. Yes. When was this a space that you've been growing up? Like, were you always very hard on yourself? I think so. Yeah, I definitely think, I think I was kind of the jokester and just pretty, pretty easy going and stuff like that. But my mom had Huntington's disease, which I'm not so sure if you're familiar with it, but it's like a nervous disorder and it's hereditary. And so from the time we were 13, she was very symptomatic and it was progressive over 20 years. So kind of living my life thinking that I might be that one day until I did get tested when they had the testing became available. So I've known for many, many years that I don't have it and my sisters mm -hmm. don't either, thank heavens. But um, I think that was kind of at a very important, crucial time when I was growing up and I was, that conditioning part was happening. I just kind of learned to be either reckless or fearful because if I had it, I, I was very reckless living my life that way or fearful having it, not being able to have a real life. You know, so right. that that was a very big part of um, kind of my fears and who I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and the insecurity too. Yeah, yeah. And like, if you heard that from anybody else, how? What would you say to them if they're like, "Well, I haven't been living my life properly. I haven't." What would you say to them? I'd say, well, you know, that's what we're here for. I'd just say, live your life to the fullest. You know, I'm so good at telling people. I was thinking about that today. I, yeah. My friend is having to deal with something and I'm like, I'm just matter of factly putting it out there. And she's like, you're not wrong. You know, and I'm like, but yet, I, and I know, because I've been doing this a lot lately. I'm like, but what if she was on the other foot? You know, I wouldn't be listening to myself. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know how to be listening to my friends either. I don't really trust them. <laughs> 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 you, you know, I'm, I know. I'm just, yeah. This individual energy that you have, it's kind of very, it's, it's individual. It's like your yes. own. It's, it's, it also takes you through like bouts of like nostalgia of like oh, yeah. melan melancholy of like, oh my gosh, what is the purpose of this? Why am I here to, there's so many fears, like, yeah. I do sign What's that often. I'm like, okay, I signed up for this position somewhere. I didn't, I don't know who I was before this life, but I thought I was a tough girl apparently because I signed yeah. up for this one, three projector yeah. stuff. And I'm like, why? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It doesn't mean <laughs> Reminds it's easy. me why I was tough. Yeah, yeah. It's almost feel like disconnected from your own spirit. Do you feel for that sure. sometimes? Most definitely. All the time. Yeah. And yeah. and I hate that because being mm -hmm. an empath and everything like that, it, it just, you know, it's, there's a lot of, I don't trust my gut instinct, which I should be, or that, that knowing, which, yeah. you know, is my gift is just knowing. And I've just learned, I don't trust that anymore. Cause I don't, I don't understand me. Mm. I do, but I don't. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. 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 I can hear both. I can hear just like inner knowing that's very loud and also the doubts and the fears and it's okay sometimes yeah. we just need to allow these you know these energies this wisdom to coexist but first it's like how do we soothe ourselves how do we know that you know logically I know all the things I could be doing to feel okay but I'm not there yet so instead of yeah. okay starting to look at the stories you mentally know that there's nothing wrong with you and perhaps you've always been living your design with your conditioning around you? I think human, just, this has given me like that, that structure, not necessarily structure, but that book, because you know, everybody needs a rule book for themselves or whatever. This yeah. has definitely helped me accept myself a lot more than what I ever did. It just mm -hmm. knowing this, but then I wonder why I haven't taken it further, you know, like, I uh, mean, I've had many, many years that I've known about human design yeah. and I've, I know just enough to be dangerous, but you know, <laughs> just enough to be dangerous. And I love looking up all my friends' charts and stuff like that. You know, I help them with their kids. I think it's a priceless tool when it comes yeah. to like knowing how to direct. If somebody had known I was a projector, you know, and, and how to like guide me in a certain way, geez, the magic. <laughs> yeah yeah the magic like you know I see this excitement this, and then when it comes to yourself sometimes we're so it's also it's also like the narrative that we've had for so long that doesn't get yeah. it doesn't get changed it's not like we download this new software human design and then yeah. we you know we see everything differently so you know 
there's so much of the tension in how you see yourself so much yes yeah are you comfortable going into that path like when we talk sure. about self-recognition okay. and how you see yourself and you know how old you are what you should have been doing like it sounds like the shoulds are very very loud yes yes definitely yeah I feel like I've kind of failed myself yeah definitely yeah. And just in kind of accepted, you know, like financially, I should be in a different place. And, you know, and I was headed in the right direction and, and, you know, just making dumb choices or just really not caring and just being frivolous and, you know, whatever. So, yeah. When you say you were heading in the right direction, where were you at? Um, like when I started working um, in the professional world, you know, I worked my way up from a receptionist position to a pretty high up position. And I'd also had went to massage school during that time period. So that was just kind of on the back burner. But, you know, mm -hmm. I was making a great salary. I had money in savings. I was driving a sweet car. You know, I, you know, I just at that age, you know, up until 32, you know, that was the direction that I believe where I should have been at 54. It's like, okay, that should have set me up, you know, yeah. but I, then I ended up, you know, I quit um, to do massage just to get away from that stress of what I was right. doing because it just what wasn't told you to quit. What was the, what were the factors that led you to quitting that? I, I don't really know. I mean, I do think it was divine timing or something. I think that I did. I finally, that it was just that moment in time when I still listened to myself. There wasn't any yeah. of the, I, I didn't have all the self doubt, I guess, or insecurities. There was a, I was confident in my life and mm -hmm. so I just felt like this, what I was doing was so much directed by other people and so stressful. And so I just didn't click with it anymore. And I was like, I'm going to start doing massage. And financially I was okay. You know, I didn't, I didn't have to, I got the opportunity to, and then. <laughs> Wait, you, so tell me a little bit more. You got the opportunity to do massage. Quit, therapy. Like, yeah. Well, I went to school and, um, for massage therapy and then but I continued to work in my other job because the money and everything else and then mm -hmm. so about eight years later because I didn't want to do massage after I got done with the internship I was kind of like over it so right but yeah it, so it just kind of sat on the back burner and then I always knew that I I didn't like something that I could it was like my other alternative so yeah. I I guess I had to I could choose make a choice and so mm -hmm. I felt like a grown-up back then more so than I do now I'm like okay mm -hmm. well I've made this and so now let me give this a try and yeah. you know very very successful and everything else and then but then the empath that I am started taking on everybody's energy and didn't know how to get right. rid of it so I just I got burned out with that too because I right. just I didn't realize what I was doing there was so little of me left by the time I got by the time I realized what was happening that that I was an empath and that I was taking on other people's energy and you know yeah, yeah. That the so, martyr in me was walking around thinking that was so cool for like helping people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you you are, and I'm sure you did help a lot of people as well. But sometimes, you know, along the way we lose ourselves, you know, doesn't yes. mean it's necessarily right. the wrong path because hearing from what you said and reflecting back, when you made the decision to quit, when you were diving into it, that was this inner knowing that you were honing into. Mm -hmm. And perhaps you're, you know, you were you're coming out of the or you're, you know, in the midst, I don't know your entire situation right now of burnout. And when we're in that state, it's almost hard to be hopeful or at ease because our body's exhausted. We've been giving so much, especially as a projector, we've been giving so much, but we're not feeling successful. We're not feeling good. And I, that's you... where I've been for quite some time. So yeah, I how feel like, would you say? gosh, at least over five years. Yeah. I mean, that's why I guess I'm so frustrated with myself. I feel like, okay, so, because that person back then just yeah. picked up and did something else. You know, this person is who I am now yeah. and with all the things. Now I'm just kind of stuck in that place, you know, because mm. I had the confidence or whatever the energy was that was pushing me, you know, and made me be okay with making those just those choices. Yeah. I did. But now it's like, I'm older now and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, like, there's a whole different uh things that you look at I guess when you get this age it's like not everybody's gonna hire me or you know right. am I, what I'm gonna do go to school to be the you know something and it's 
like saturated with younger people out there getting those jobs. Right, you know, right, it's right, like there's right. a different thought process, I guess, that comes along with. Yeah, now. definitely, definitely. It's you know, it feels like the stakes are higher. Yes. Yeah. That. Yeah. Yes. What it feels yeah. like. Yeah. So there's more there's pressure more. to even figure it out to get clear, but <laughs> but also knowing that. Do you feel any regret for choosing that path? I don't feel any regret at all. I don't, um, I know that it was the right, I know because I would never have known human design. I would, I've definitely, this is an amazing thing. Just this world of being the spiritual part of me. So I don't think it's more me than that corporate person was. So yeah. I, don't Ooh, think I made, how does choice. I made wrong choices body? within. It feels, I mean, it feels good. That's something that I've always, always known that that was the right choice to make. It's just mm -hmm. how I managed it or, you know, the, my priorities and stuff like that. Just, you know, like I said, I realized there was a point where I lost myself. And so within the massage, and so I've been working on finding that person and I found her and but my brain's like, okay, we're here, but it's just like, there was resistance. Yeah, there's yeah, tension. So, Something is not aligning yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ooh, when you said I found her, where did you find yourself? In what aspect? Um, um, like learning things. Like I am a projector, and I'm like, okay, you know. And the the it, my chart is a little bit wonky. It's not, and I'm like, okay, of course it would be, you know. And, <laughs> yeah. And, and then learning that I was an empath was that was so. The beginning of me going, I'm not like crazy because I felt yeah. like I could walk in a room and just like get anxiety. And then I finally realized it's not because it's me, it's everybody else, you know, and yes. so I have to I work on that, you know, so that I guess it's been, I don't know, probably seven, probably 10 years or so that I've really kind of like, I mean, I've always been comfortable more so in this world than in the corporate world so to answer your short version is I don't have any regrets other than yeah. some other choices that I made yeah financially you know is where I should be more of a grown-up when that area but yeah yeah is there some place you would have liked to be by now if we're going to like you know dip our toes into <laughs> oh, and that's kind of funny too because you have know, a massage you can go any different direction you know I've taken cranial sacral work which I great at and stuff like that but I I don't want to be yeah 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 and that's enough does it feel yeah. enough when you say I don't want to do that not really and not really I mean I'm okay with it but I guess there was that uh, my dad was like you know my dad and my twin sister that are both so driven they're like oh yeah. you know and so yeah. I think I harbor a lot little of that you know maybe more than I'd like to admit that that their concerns concerned me I guess even though I know everything's going to be okay but I yeah. you know I'm, I'm limiting myself though because like you're never going to get rich being a massage therapist I'm just um, saying <laughs> there's always ways know. or other things you never yeah. know right it might come yeah. from somewhere else but the the yes. ego center just like really wanting to prove what I've noticed with my own ego is that it's not proving for others. Like we're here to sort of master play in the material world. You know, capitalism, all of that was, you know, established by Define Hearts, the exchange, which, you know, helps us survive and stay alive here because we do need food to survive. We do need to live right. in a place. People need to be compensated. But like yeah. everything, you know, it's neutral. It's not good or bad. We can we can lean towards the shadow side sometimes and then also, you know, lean to the extreme. But for me, it was learning that I'm not proving to others because I was tuning that energy out because I could prove myself in the corporate world. I can prove myself and meet all the deadlines. But the cost of that proving was my sanity, my spirit, yeah. my energy. And it wasn't until I was like, oh, I do have this energy to prove. Sometimes I get a little bit competitive, even though I don't like, you know, to compare myself to others. But I do want to do the best with me. I want to improve whatever version I have done. You know, when I orient that energy into like this competitiveness, this proving to like, oh no, it's for myself. I want to prove to myself that I can do it. Is that healthy? Is that a healthy, is that a healthier well, direction than I guess? Yeah, yeah. It is an individual energy specifically in your case. And proving is not bad. 
but the stories we tell our, about ourselves about the proving yeah. or like the stories we have about being competitive could also you know put us in a free state like how do you feel when I say I'm just going to use this statement and you tell me how you feel like you're a competitive person I would typically say no but I'm definitely there are because that balance, that scale, you know, that I was talking yeah. about, that's, there's competition there, right? I guess yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's me like judging myself at least. So I'm thinking maybe a comparison, but it, I'm not seeing it as like that when running past the victory line or something like that. Right, My right, comparison right. is maybe more petty or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's totally fine. I'm here to hopefully help you <laughs> notice these energies or even like the judgment or the stories that come out. Being competitive with yourself, it's okay. Wanting to prove for yourself, it's okay as long as you also take care of the rest of your body. So yeah. knowing that you have that much openness, seven centers open, and you still love doing massage perhaps, but you're going to pick up people's anxieties. They might want to like, you know, share their life stories with you, even though you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, you know, I, I wasn't ready to hear this. You have gate 30, uh, 13, which is the gate of the listener. And this is all about hearing people's stories, people's secrets, people are just sharing with you. And I can imagine being in a massage space where you're, you know, helping them feel better. They are also opening themselves up to you, but you can also say like, Hey, you know, try to nudge that energy. If you don't want to absorb that story, if you want to, you don't want to hear all the secrets they're telling you. Well, I think in that environment, that's okay. Like I'm comfortable, like in that environment, that's a good place for it, but not when I'm out in public, like with a having a good time that's when it still happens mm. and it just becomes awkward for the person telling the story or me, for you. You know, it's like how did we get here <laughs> you right know, right like, you know, you'll look at their eyes and, and you're both kind of like how did we get here because of that who I am you know it just goes so deep all the time and yes, so yes, in yes. my massage room I'm perfectly okay with it that's the yeah. place for it but like in, not in the outside you know I don't Ooh. want it to be yeah yeah outside, so Yes, boundaries around it. Again, yeah. easier said than done. Easier said than done, especially <laughs> when I'm like so much of who I was, like a people pleaser, wanting to be, make people feel comfortable, being projector, knowing how they're feeling and like tuning myself to yes. kind of match them and losing myself in the process. But also yes. knowing that you saying no is an act of kindness to yourself and also to them, especially because technically you're not receiving it, right? You don't want to. It's like making you feel agitated. So you're like, oh, like we're going yes. there or you know what are some practices where you're able to say like oh this might be too much right now is this the right place for it or like can I refer you to someone else you know I don't right. know how this is going to look like exactly for you but yeah. just notice it when it starts to when people start to share their stories and your body it's like mm, you know maybe tensing up yeah Yes, I do think that that's what happens. And then I think that's that, that moment in time, you know, when they're like, oh, whoa, what a minute, you know, what happened here? Yeah. So yeah, definitely it tends up. And I and I have a facial expression that definitely says what I'm feeling all the time. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, I'm like, I can roll my eyes or whatever, which I would never be that rude, but I it just, it it gets a little heavy and anxiety issue. It, so yes. I definitely feel that. that. Yeah, yeah. And like finding ways to be able to be like, oh, I, I'm glad you feel safe enough to share with me. But you know, this is a lot. Do you want me to refer you to someone? No. Practice ways to say that because sometimes I do get people, I don't have the same gate, I have the 33. But sometimes that gate gets activated and people come to me strangers, coffee shops, and they tell me their life story. I'm like, I was just doing my work here like yeah. you know and then they leave and I'm like you don't know anything about me and I notice a bitterness sometimes like it was an hour know, of my time yes. right yep and just noticing that and be like it's okay you know I recognize it this time next time if I have to be you know more forthcoming I'll learn next time because I don't want to be that jerk either I want to yeah. be a nice person but I find myself being kind of like I put a wall up I don't really I'm like I got as many friends as I want they know who I am I know who they are and I'm, I'm just like I don't and so it's a, not such a good thing all the time you know to put oh, a wall yes. up I automatically just like to keep that from happening I guess and you know I if I when I kind of figure myself out or when I you know figure out why I do these certain things or why these things happen like we're trying to do then yeah. I think like you said, that it will give me the tool to like redirect it in a different way, you know, yeah. or how 
and not be so focused on it happening and trying to prevent it from happening. Yes, because we can't prevent that. So much of our connections with people and how people are is out of our control, but just noticing, oof, okay, I'm feeling this. Something that I've noticed also, I have also seven centers undefined. When I'm in a crowded space, I feel so amplified, like at a concert and like I can do it for small doses of time or like when I'm in my family, which I love them so much, but it can be so much energy. And I just feel like, get me out of here. I just need to load. Yes. Yeah. So I, I used to judge my, judge myself for being grumpy. Like, why are you so grumpy? Like these are family. (laughs) You should love them. They love you. I didn't go to my family reunion this weekend because of that. Cause the last few times that I've went, I was like, they pissed me off. I'm like, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with a great attitude. I'm going to make, I'm going to be the, you know, like, okay, everything's okay. And I try to be that peacemaker. And then I'm by the end. I'm like, (laughs) I'm like, how did this spin around where I'm pissed off at everybody else and everybody else is getting great when everybody else had the problem to start out with I'm like what (laughs) so yeah yeah yes right just noticing that openness because sometimes it's you know right now when we're feeling you know some days we're more triggered than others some days we need more alone time and understanding almost like the fluidity of how we move especially we're seven undefined centers I've noticed for myself I'm more defined often than just my design because of the transits and the people in my life, I'm really just my ego and spleen. You're really just your ego and direction. Yes. I don't know much about transits, but I did learn, I learned that they happen, they're, they're constantly changing. And so that's when I kind of realized that there's the two, op, uh, two opposing sides to everything. So yeah. even if I'm undefined or whatever, I can still, we all can still be yes. experiencing that certain, because it's where the transit part, right? Yes. Like, or in connection yeah, with yeah, others. So. And Yes. So like you have a lot of activation in your sacral. So the desire to like work to like respond to things will come often for you, but also knowing how to hold and release that energy in your body because your sacral, you know, all our undefined and open centers are meant to be taking in, meant to amplify, they're meant to be conditioned. But also, how do we take care of ourselves now that we know our designs? Like, oh, okay, after my family, I need to go for a run because there's adrenaline. There's like some fight going on. So how do we do that instead of judging like I should not feel like this? Because whenever there's a should coming or I have to, that's usually not coming from within. That's usually coming from the mind. That's usually definitely condition. Yeah. And when you say, you know, I know that that's all our open centers are made to be taken on energy, but but then again, you know, do we want all that energy? So you're saying like, find some way to release that or to yeah. let it, yeah. To acknowledge it when possible. Sometimes I look at the transits and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have every single center activated. No wonder I'm extra moody. No wonder like, and that's not like, you know, giving excuses for, you know, when I'm being grumpy, but that's simply- No, but it helps make sense. Right. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm holding more than my body is used to processing. So I know I need, you know, maybe an extra hour of walk. I know I need this extra alone time. I know. So it almost helps me know what my tipping point might be without judging myself or like thinking I need to gaslight my way into what I'm feeling like that. When you say you, you, you know, you're handling more than what your body can process. That is, that's a good way to look at that. Like it's, so instead of that overwhelm, just like, okay, acknowledge it and then yes, try to, yes. it's more than what I can handle right now. So, okay. Yeah. That's yeah. Good way to look at it. I like that. Yeah. See, like this energy is just learning about it from like a different perspective can help us yeah. go from like right or wrong. And like, especially when you're working with clients, when you're in that space and you mentioned that you were like really burned out and feeling stuck what is the stuckness you're feeling if you could describe it is it because you want to step into another direction or because like you want to break from this I just I think like am I supposed to be move past this like um I you know you, like there's another I like I know that there's something else that I should be doing mm. so it's that knowingness but I just don't know what it is. And I don't, uh-huh. and if I, if it comes up, I'm, I'm still too much in the judgment or I'm just, I can't um, act on it or whatever. So yeah. I don't know if it would be the invite or what, obviously, I guess it would be some sort of invite, but I, that just trusting that gut instinct. Cause I do know that this is where I'm not supposed to be anymore. Mm-hmm. I think I've done this past its point. Otherwise yeah, I would yeah. enjoy it still. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's basically your inner guidance. You know how at the beginning you're like, I think I'm shut off from my inner guidance, my gut. This is your gut. Even fun. though, yeah, <laughs> even though you don't know where you're going, even though you do have an you know defined identity center, it's telling you where you're at is not where you're meant to be. Right. But right. now learning to hold the question with your, especially with your undefined head and ajnas, like, ooh. Because even for those with the definition in their head and ajnas, they're not here to answer questions for themselves. Right. Yeah. So That's how can for. we <laughs> hold the question? Yeah, no, yeah. You're here to poke the, you're like, wait, let me keep asking you about this because now you have this question, but maybe it's not about finding the answer. Okay. I'm for that. That's, that makes things a lot less pressure in <laughs> right? ju judging myself. Yeah. There's, less but then time. again... So, but at this point, it's been going on for so long, there is yeah. not necessarily an answer, but there is a, a road that I'm avoiding or that I'm, you know, like there's that fear factor. There's something still, yeah. that, something is so amplified in the fear area that. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to go into your fears? Do you feel go comfortable? Ahead. I know. Yeah. <laughs> you ahead. <laughs> I almost you answer do, your question did already. <laughs> want to do some dancing around your fears? Yes. Oh, we can dance around or we can just go straight to it. No. <laughs> Both. We can tangle Avoiding. our way to it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What is so you guys, you have to lead me there because. Uh... Yeah, I'll lead you there. I'll lead you there. And you tell me, uh, you know, I'm being guided by you as much as you are guiding me right now. Okay. Yeah. So the biggest fear that comes up when you're like, okay, let's start something new without knowing the where, what, how, what is the first fear that is, you know, getting your attention? What, what will change in my life? Mm, what will change? The people around me that I, that, that I have to form my comfort with, you know, like, or people so you around me, just the circumstances. Again? Well, I just wonder, you know, I, I question everything. So I'd like the circumstances around me will change. The people around me will change. And it takes my breath away to, you know, to that much change takes my breath away. So that's that fear coming up. So yeah. that, that's my first thought. So, yeah. Yeah. Is it afraid of not seeing them? Afraid of having a different routine? Afraid of them not being in my life anymore. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, what if they are just things changing that I don't things changing so much I don't recognize it and like at this age you know I'm like ah, you know yeah. that's not something that you want to do at 54 but mm -hmm. then maybe you do well it's okay if you don't feel like it right now it's okay it's <laughs> right. daunting tell that even tell that to like teenagers nowadays so many people are having earlier crisis because of like the pressure to have to show up to be themselves to be authentic to find our thing the more we try to do it, the scary it becomes because we become so strategic and mental about it that we, you know, it's hard to listen yes. to that voice. Yeah. yeah. And I do see our younger generation being more stuck, you know, like not some of them are moving on. And then I do see like there's a whole people that are kind of stuck. So, yeah, that's because yeah. of the anxiety, the fears and stuff like that. Yes. So. But sometimes being stuck is a phase in itself. Because being stuck, I what wanted have to you be, noticed? Yeah. What have you noticed by being stuck? Um, comfortable. I'm very comfortable being stuck. Whether that comfortable is um, content, it's yeah. you know it's content, but then it's it's stifled. Then I'm not like constantly being in my place to learn different things. So yeah. my learning is um, that's where my learning is like all over the place because I'm not really being specific with it I guess because I'm comfortable mm -hmm. when you're comfortable then you're bored and especially I guess with that that shock factor you know I, I, bored is not my gig so yeah but, yeah mm, so. but is it really comfort if you're feeling I don't know <laughs> yeah I, it's something that I know it's familiar it's what I know yes, you know yes. and that's the comfort is right there yeah yeah it's what you know but doesn't mean it's safe anymore it's does right. it still yeah, feel safe um, no, no, I would say it does not feel safe. Yeah. Because, because there's, because I know I it doesn't feel safe. That's all I got. I mean, I don't yeah. really know. I don't have anything else past that, but yeah. Because if it so were safe, then there would be more enjoyment in it. Yeah. Maybe. So if it doesn't feel, if change doesn't feel safe yet, comfort is also not safe. <laughs> 
<laughs> right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where does that lead you? <laughs> right. Stuck. No. Yeah. No. I. Okay. There's so either way. So I just need to jump into that fear, the fear that's going to be more of a benefit to me as opposed to, because there's fear in both places. The yeah. Comfort and yeah. The, I wouldn't say like my approach is never like feel the fear and do it anyway, because right. I think, you know, there's a fears are here to show us something, right? So there's a discomfort right. of something changing. Okay. There is discomfort because yes. you wouldn't see the same people. You wouldn't having that. Okay. Acknowledge yeah. that because fear is not bad. I think that's the most important thing to learn. Fear tells us something, but how we interpret our fear is also important. You know, sometimes we might get so stuck of like, oh, I'm fear, I'm afraid of change without realizing that where we're at right now is actually not as comfortable and safe as I thought, because otherwise I would feel more peace and ease. Yeah. It's almost like it can stop us from seeing what's right in front of us. So we, you know, we've established that right now. And then what else are you afraid of? What's the next fear that comes up? That I will change, you know, that, that I will change, you know, but that's not a bad thing. I mean, now as for, you're kind of pointing, you're giving me the right words or the right way to think of it. I mean, that's not, but that's been my fear. And that was my second thing to come up is that I will change so much that the world around me will change that I'm not familiar with but it's not a bad thing. So yeah, I get it now. I, you know, I get that, that there was both on both sides. It was just, yeah. I was choosing one that was keeping me stuck as opposed to going in a direction, listening to that flow. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't say you were choosing <laughs> because we never consciously choose the hard things for ourselves. Never. I think oh, sure? as humans, <laughs> we're trying to survive and we survive with comfort. Yes. We survive with what we know. And the fact that you have this energy, that's almost like you're here to initiate us to do something no one has ever done. It's almost daunting. <laughs> but yet and I have we, to be invited though. Right. Well, no, <laughs> to do the things you want to do, you don't have to be invited. It's when you share okay. with others, when you share your story with okay. others. Yeah. Otherwise you initiate yourself into whatever you want. You want to start to go and try to, that's the thing. It is a projected channel, but you are here to just live your life. It is about your, I do remember one of my channels is to like, get what I, to go for what I desire. Mm -hmm. But then I'm like, but if I'm supposed to wait to be invited, I'm just so right. But that makes sense. Okay. Right. That's where the tension happens. That's when you're like guiding others. That's when you have to be invited. But if you want to like start your podcast, share with the world, totally open to it. Because the invitation is not about permission for you to show your fullness. That's not what the recognition and invitation is. I I see cry right now. That is brilliant. I mean, that's like that, you know, and it wasn't human design that got me stuck there with that. But that, I mean, it's just when I finally decided when I knew that I had to wait to be invited, I'm like, I get that. But then, so I'm kind of been sitting back, I guess, waiting to be invited and getting pissed off because you know, it, I wasn't getting invited to what I wanted Ooh, yes. or what I enjoyed. And now it's like, I don't have to because that's mine, right? Yes. You it. don't have to. Thank you, you feel the pull. Your ego wants to do it. Your desires, your desires are the biggest breadcrumbs. That's your authority. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, that's why awesome there's not because that's awesome. <laughs> that, <don't>... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I do feel like, you know, like I, sometimes I feel selfish or whatever, you know, but oh, yeah me having things or me doing things that I enjoy or that I want doesn't make me like a, a miserable person or towards other people. So yeah. I was kind of confused. It does, you know, like, why wouldn't, like, why is it not okay to have what I want? Yes. So, and it is yeah. okay. Yeah. It is okay. okay You're here you. to be, in fact, people with a defined heart with the 5125 people often like from the outside, they're like, you're selfish. They might even say that, but you're meant to be. I don't know if that helps you relax into it because- it it kind of does just the way you, because I can be selfish in a way, knowing that that's okay, that, that, you know, I knew somewhere it said that that's, you know, it's okay for me to go for what I want, but there was still that other part that I wasn't yeah. getting because I was supposed to, I was, I'm not the tribal person like you are. I guess mine's the individual, but yet I get it. I get it. My thought, brain's still kind of processing. Yeah, I'm not yeah, have yeah, words yeah. for it, but okay. yeah, that is comforting to know that. So yeah. it helps. Yeah you're like you know where you're going you know what you want there are fears it's okay and I'm glad we like dip our toes we dance with them a little bit you know and knowing that you know you are not 
initiate there's also so much fear around <laughs> the human design world like you should not initiate if you're not a manifester you know what's funny I just had a session with a manifester that had their only channels are projected two of their channels so they're like, what does that mean? I'm like, you, so much of what you do and how you share with others, you need recognition and invitation. You can start whatever you want, right. but you know, you still need the recognition and invitation. And she, she's like, yeah. I thought I was initiating wrong. I thought I had to like yell at people in their faces about what I had to do. And nobody was responding to me. I'm like, you know, the things you- that we learn. <laughs> right. So she just needed to be, she still needs to be invited into that situation. So that's yeah. a bit confusing though, to be a manifester with, with projected so channels. Yeah. 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 So would... like, that's why this knowledge is so good. It can be supportive at a surface level, but sometimes we need to go deeper because then the surface yeah. keeps us stuck because we think, you know, we need the invitation and we can't do anything. I can't start my business if nobody invited me, but yeah, the invitation that's... can look so different. They can be like, Stacy, do you want to, you know, do you want to start this conference <laughs> or like Stacy, what do you think about that? You know, invitation can look so different. Right. Come through so and I was kind of putting my failures in with failing because I wasn't, I was project putting myself in places, you know, that I wasn't invited. So I was kind of mishmashing those. Yeah. To make it, so that's what was, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's like compounded with the fear when your one is like, no, the insecurity of it. And then the fear is like, I don't want to try. No, you're here to initiate yourself into new heights. And the people that are watching you or the people in your, you know, in your aura, they might be initiated themselves as well. You know, this is about being centered in yourself. Like the more that you're able to honor where you want, go for that. Gather data, gather data, because when you're gathering data, when you're breaking things, when you're finding things that doesn't work, your first line gets stronger too, because they're like, ah, this is how I strengthen my foundation. Even though it was scary to do it, but you're like, this is stronger. This is how I become more unwavered in who I am. And I think when I'm more deliberate in what I'm doing and when I do make those mistakes and by deliberate, I mean, for like, whether I take notes, you know, if it's some, I need to be more deliberate that way. I don't continue to make the same mistakes because I've just, I feel like my mistakes have been consisting of like, I keep making them over and over again because I'm just kind of, there's so much I'm going on and it could be something minor is like when I'm doing some crafting and stuff like that. I can't seem to get this one thing that everybody seems to be like knocking it out of the ballpark and yeah. I can't get it down and I do it over and over, but I'm still doing it over and over the wrong way. Cause I'm not really like, I'm so pissed at myself. I'm not really <laughs> learning. I'm not taking it and like writing down the data, you know, like yeah. the data says, okay, that doesn't work. So I'm not really getting a clear picture of what's not working is so what I'm figuring out through this conversation. Right. And also the third line, even though they learn through mistakes, a lot of the time, they don't care about it as much. They just want to explore. <laughs> it's almost like, oh, I fell down. Amazing. They're not that concerned about unless, you know, they're, they feel pulled to die deeper. They're not that concerned about what are the mistakes I'm making? It's almost like, let me play. This is a playful energy. And the more we, the less we think about what are we getting out of it? Because sometimes when we're in it, we don't see it. Hindsight is always 20, 20, right? right. So when you're yeah. in it, like, do you allow yourself to play? If you're, you know, mi- making knitting or crafting, it's fine. If you're repeating yeah. the same thing, it's fine. Doesn't matter. And that's, I have to learn that better. Cause I do think that I also am afraid of like what my actions might uh, project on other people and so you know my mistakes I'm very careful you know that's another reason like if it's something that I'm doing and if it's going to affect other people then that gets me a lot of anxiety and stuff like that I'm less likely to do it because I don't want you know to hurt them or I don't want um, them to be mad at me or whatever you know so it's I guess that's more the individual me then and that's because I'm not made to kind of I don't know I you, do you understand what I'm saying I'm like yeah. I feel like like that so my mistakes also are making mistakes in a group setting or whatever it's I'm just less likely I'm that's kind of another reason I want to stay back because if I if I don't have that right knowledge or if it 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 wasn't right then that's going to fall all back on me and I don't want it to like for that either for me to look bad or for it to affect something going forward with with other people so yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. well (laughs) 
this was hard for me to learn when I was, you know, learning to be like more me <laughs> and even learning to be like less apologetic and it's still scary sometimes like people read my posts and they're like you're doing this wrong you're harming people I'm like what and I still feel like I'm like wait this is them being triggered and I still try to answer as kindly as possible we're not in control of how people see us you know yeah. and having <laughs> you have the shock factor you have this beautiful wisdom and how people take it is not really up to you to control so by shrinking ourselves doesn't make the impact less it's anything we're dimming our light right but it's almost like and okay I, I can feel that anxiety I can feel that how do I acknowledge that without making it my fault because it's not there's a lot of times I did learn uh, well there's something that stuck with me a while back that I do have the ability to make pretty big impacts on people. And so I need mm -hmm. to, I need to be very cautious. And I've learned it as I've gotten older, because as I was younger, I would just say anything and that could be really reckless. But um, now that I've gotten older and I realized that that projector, that is what I am, yeah. that my words can change or can direct people. And so I'm not saying I'm always going to say the right thing, but I, I do try to it's again another reason I'm so cautious I can be really cautious yeah. is because I I you know I don't want to be that heavy on somebody right. but you're right people have we all can make I make my own decisions nobody makes them for me so I know you know you weed through what you can use and weed through, through what you don't is how I kind of live my life as far as like I'm not somebody tells me to jump off a bridge or something for whatever reason because it's fun I'm gonna yeah. be like no I don't think so you know just because you yeah. say it's fun I don't think so but so, and I'm careful about saying stuff like that to people also, because I used mm. to say, well, I wouldn't, if I were in that situation, I would not do that, you know? Right. And then I happened to be in that situation and I'm like, whoa, okay. Yeah. I needed to give them a little bit more, like, instead of being so bossy and direct and saying how I would do things, I need to like be more supportive and stuff. So mm. that's, that's kind of. Right, right. I, I love the wisdom behind it. Because again, you know, the power that you have to impact others, and then being very careful. So that's when the invitation comes in. You know, that's when like, when they recognize, and they ask you, you can always ask, like, may I share like, what I'm feeling, or like, don't take it and see how they, and then if they're like, no, it's fine. So that's when you learn how to move that energy that you have to shock them into, you know, into a new height, into a new direction, you know, and realizing that, you can guide that's your invitation to guide them because that's basically what you're doing even when you're responding to what they're telling you you're guiding them in a way through your words but don't be afraid and that does to feel use good. it yeah, yeah 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 it does feel good but then I go back to that scale thing too because I'm like oh you know I, you know like I'm like just be can I just not just be you know not I don't have to like pat myself on the back all the time or whatever no but. you should you should okay. actually okay. you should you know because <laughs> Again, projections, we projectors, we don't see ourselves. And we, especially with our intuitiveness, our empathy, sometimes we focus on the things that are not working <laughs> more than the things right, that are. Yes. Yeah. And then yes. when we look back at our lives, we see everything that didn't work instead of like, wait, what were the things that were unexpected? What was this unexpected conversation I had with a stranger? And they said I changed their lives. Yeah. It, it, yes. And I do sometimes, I like to sit back and reflect because when I don't think that, you know, I'm like, when I'm when real down on myself, I'm like, look at yeah. the things you've accomplished, you know, yes. kind of give yourself credit for that. So, yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, the ego needs that. This divine center, this divine center that loves to work, but also loves to rest. And it also loves efficiency. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So celebrate that, you know, yeah, pat myself in the back. I feel amazing. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Yeah. I, guess, yeah, I, I just it. always took it as I'm just, you know, that's the better than thou. And I'm, I'm really, yeah. you know, so it, it's, I see myself as a projector, but then I don't give myself the credit for doing that, you know, being in alignment, right? Being in yeah, alignment. Yeah. And it's almost I'm not like, really giving myself that credit. Yeah. Or like allowing ourselves to feel good, especially when we're so used yeah. to feeling the so the comfort of feeling safe out of alignment being alignment feels very like nerve-wracking and triggering because your body's like what yes. aren't like isn't the other shoe going to drop like aren't you like it's yeah. almost like we need to keep proving so we also need to like mentally physically support ourselves and say hey it's okay just like we dance with the fears right now we're like yeah it's yeah. okay we touched it we didn't spiral you know we can go deeper we want 
but look at what it showed you. That's what I, that's what I'm trying to do, you know, is like, look at what it showed me and not so much as look at that mistake, but just like, look what that showed me. So yeah, I'm, that's just with, and since I've gotten your book, you know, started kind of, there was a few things that you said just when I was reading all of your stuff on your website and just in, getting in the book and that helped me like make that a little bit easier to understand a little bit easier transition. Like it's okay to make mistakes. And I've been, for instance, about my weight, you know, like I lost quite a bit of weight and then I just went on to eat whatever I wanted to. And yeah. well, eventually it's going to catch up with you. Right. You know, like eventually it will. And so I, so I was telling myself after, you know, the other day, I was like, okay, so you know now that you can't lose weight and then just go back to your old eating habits. So just take it as that, learn from your mistakes, sure. like really absorb it and not just get pissed off at myself like I normally would, but just learn from that, that, and just, and it's a, like a duh, no brainer, but yet still, I'm just trying to incorporate my, you know, like not being so hard on myself, I guess, for it happening and just kind of taking it as, okay, obviously it's not going to work, so let's change it. Right, right. And it's almost like with the third line, a lot of your solutions or a lot of the things that do work, you're going to learn as you navigate it. Like you, it's, it's almost like you get this data. doesn't mean you will know the answer. It doesn't mean you will know the solution, but it's almost like, okay, let's pivot. This is about like, okay, let's pivot. I'm and good at that. Like, yeah. See, like the more we talked and like the more it's like you are connected in yourself in so many ways, but you weren't seeing it. Seeing it. You <laughs> no, weren't seeing right. it. <laughs> Yep. I, Cause I was focused on just all the things that weren't working and all the negative things. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. I knew, I mean, I, like I said, I knew that this would be awesome. I knew that I just needed to go further and for some reason I just hadn't. So your opportunity yeah. came up and the invitation came up. <laughs> yes. So. Yes. I'm so glad. And then also looking at these less like neutral, like all the energies, all the fears are not bad. Sometimes we're like, you know, they're lower frequencies, all that. It does keep us in a place that's not super comfortable, but they also show us, they give, there are signs and we can't directly looking at it doesn't show us the signs. We need to dance around it. Like we did right now. We like, we went yes. in every direction to be like, oh, <laughs> but here's the wisdom. Here's my guidance. Here's what I know for myself. <laughs> yes. Yep. And yep. Yes. It definitely was a great dance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah do or is that just a projector thing you think or is that like designs that just happen to like it can be could this like dance so because this was easy like this yeah. was easy and it was fun and stuff like that but so why what made this so easy and like <sighs> other things are not other conversations or other people are not so easy with me yeah like, oh <laughs> I think <laughs> it's I mean most of my work it doesn't feel like the actual work because it's just through conversation because I feel like we are all so resourced to support ourselves, but I get in my own way all the time. Having someone, another projector, generator, manifester, like everybody can guide, having someone to lovingly hold you, recognize you, it's almost like, here, you were looking yeah. at the stains or at the parts that, you know, you didn't clean and you didn't see all the bright other parts. This work yeah. doesn't have to be difficult but we make it difficult when we start to stress right. out and we start to contract. So we start to look for answers everywhere, but within. And then when we start to think that, you know, life is hard, I haven't figured out, you know, and then it gets louder. And sometimes it just takes a conversation, a massage. Okay. Like when I go for a massage, I feel like, I don't know what chakras has been open, but like physical work helps me get mental clarity sometimes. And for some people, mental work helps their body feels better okay I don't know if I answer yes. your question at all no, you yeah you kind of did I mean it's like because in my head I'm still kind of like thinking it out too and it's just I, I don't know if it's because we're projectors and because I'm not really sure just because it's something that we're knowledgeable about or wanting to we're trying to get that knowledge or whatever yeah. I'm not really sure I, I, like sometimes I don't really have is there a place in there that shows that I don't have words for what I, what I'm thinking or whatever? Is that oh, part of yes. me too? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you have a completely open throat. So a completely open throat, it's almost like, and then you also have your gate 17 that's hanging there in an undefined ashna. So you probably have a lot of opinions about things, a lot of thoughts, <laughs> but you don't know how to voice those opinions. It's, it's almost so like you need to be called out. out. Yes. 
But when you're called out for it, because it's in the second line and you're unconscious, when somebody recognizes you or they ask you about something, you realize you do, you're, you are able to share your opinion easier. So knowing that about yourself, is like, oh, maybe I'm not meant to express that at all the time, but the right people, the right circumstances will show me right. when they want to hear that. Plus, that one's still, that one's, like, I just, sometimes I just lose words. Like, I, like, I, yeah. in my head, if I, I don't, it doesn't come out the way it needs to or the way I'm feeling it, because I'm yeah. a feeling person. Yeah. And so when I say it, then it comes out wrong, and then everything, you know, people hear it wrong or whatever. So, yeah. yeah, yeah but, yes. Like, the, the beauty and the, the, <laughs> the challenges of the completely open throat is that you don't know how you're going to express yourself. Some days you might feel super eloquent. You're able to, you know, translate all your yep. mental realizations. Other days, words are not coming. Sometimes you might be able to explain your emotions and be able to like connect. Other times, not as much. Again, transits and people is that's when it gets defined. So noticing yep. when you're around certain people, when you're in different places, it's like, oh, do you feel the pressure to speak? That, yeah, that sometimes I do, but more so I don't, I feel that that's what makes me kind of, I don't, I'm interpreting it as yeah. the pressure to kind of sit back because I'm, I haven't, I'm not sure. That's when my anxiety takes in and then anything else is, you know, I, I can't really get past that. So that's, <laughs> yeah. that is the one thing. Yeah. So, and I see, I guess, so my end is all open and that there's no, there's no hanging gates. And, yeah, Which means that when so you do amplify this energy from other people, you take it from all the spectrum. And there are like, is it 11 gates of my map is, wait, I'm not mapping. There's nine gates, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, there's a lot. 11, right? Am I counting yes, properly? Yes, I think so. Yep. I can't count on yep. the spot or like type in the spot. <laughs> there is 11, there is 11. <laughs> yeah. So 11, a completely open center means you tap into the potential of the 11 gates. So you don't know whose expression you're going to amplify and share. You don't know where it's going to come from, which is a wonderful gift, but also scary because then you're like, oh, what am I going to say? Is this going to land or not? Yes. So yes. recognizing sometimes you might feel a pressure buildup and also, okay, so many of the gates that we have in our throat are projected. They need the recognition. When you do get the projection, when you do get the recognition to speak, when you do feel to share, in the moment when you're amplifying the voices, things will flow out of you because you don't know what you're going to say. It's almost like they often say people with undefined throats, you're not supposed to plan what you're going to say. It's about trusting your wisdom at the moment, which is hard. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> but but I think that helps though, you know, just to know that it's a, it maybe will help me not get so much anxiety to know that it's not a flaw of my of me. It's not a flaw. Yes. It's just that it's so open that it is. And to try to get those boundaries. I think the big thing about me is like really learning to put the right kind of boundaries around what I let in. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And like, you know, people, people are not aware of each other's boundaries. We don't know what something might be normal for me. And then I might've overstepped someone else's boundary. So until it's, you know, communicating our boundaries is often a very kind thing for ourselves and for others, just so they know, because, you know, Anybody who oversteps, they might feel it and they feel uncomfortable. And then you're like, well, I didn't need that. And you feel, so you're like, yeah, it's just a little bit too much right now. You know, we all have different languages or how we communicate, but you know, when you're aware of this and you can start practicing like, oh, maybe like, you know, <laughs> talk to a specialist or maybe, <laughs> you know, finding some yeah. other ways. Like, is there another time for this right now? I'm feeling a little bit tired. I don't have capacity and it's not being rude the more we overextend ourselves it's almost like we're not honoring ourselves and we can't show up for the other person and right. we end up bitter <laughs> yeah and we're not showing yeah it's, so it's, we're showing the world and everybody's like she's so grumpy or whatever I'm sure there's another word people yeah, use yeah. <laughs> for me, but, like... <laughs> yeah yeah so recognizing and because when you amplify that you don't know where the energy or the inspiration is going to come from but you can tap into many expressions. Sometimes when you go into a room, you can say something that everybody was feeling or thinking, but they don't want to, they were too shy to say. I know. And it's so, I think that happens so much more than what people will ever know. Yeah. But like, there's a little, so that does happen. And when I finally get that validation that that's what happened, I'm like, okay, why didn't somebody just say something? You know, yes. it's like so frustrating that I, I make myself feel, or I feel so 
singled out or, or whatever, when it is kind of the overall feeling of everybody, I guess, and people, I just have to learn people are just not that comfortable with putting, putting the truth out there, putting their truth out there or whatever. And, and I do understand that, but, you know, I still get pissed off when it's like, if I just said what everybody else was going to say, why is it, you know, and then people get yes. mad. I don't know. It's a whole, there's, see, there's a whole, <laughs> there's a whole thing. Yes. There. But it's, it's also part of your truth, right? Like, how can I do it kindly? How can I also like stand in my ground? Because you are like the vessel of love. That's your incarnation cross. So yeah. So how does that work? Yeah. What do you mean? I'm the vessel of love. (laughs) You have your- Like it's all so conflicting. (laughs) I know, but you are loving in so many ways. It's almost like you're embodiment of love. You have so much compassion from people understanding you have an innate love for yourself you might not feel it right away or like you know for your body for the people around you your journey and your path just like you were saying you're afraid to not see the people in your life anymore for that change it's almost like a little bit of a grief that comes with change yeah Yeah. and it's okay to feel that because you love what you've created even though it's no longer where you want to be in you still love that in a way yeah yeah and I feel like the bitterness has kind of taken over so much that I've let that be accepting too because you're saying all these kind sweet things about me and I'm like yeah you know I do have compassion for other people and it's stuff that I I'm like yeah yeah but but I walk around with that bitter chip on my shoulder a lot you know or in the water the wall up and stuff so I've I've just really grabbed on to all the negative aspects of not just my human design but just the things that you know that's just what I've been seeing. And that's just what I grab onto. And that's how I see myself. So I'm thinking if I see myself like that, other people do. And I just need to get back to like acknowledging and accepting the better parts of me and the, I mean, the parts that are, that I think are lovable. Yes. Yes. And like, we see what we focus on, even with all that, you know, people talk about timeline jumping, they talk about um, the secret, you know, attraction, you know, all that. I think it's a matter of focus because whatever we're focused on, that's the only thing we'll see. If somebody tells us, look at people wearing red all day or like, oh, I don't feel good wearing red. We might walk out and see all the beautiful people wearing red. And we're like, why don't I look as good like that? But that's because we focus on that. And sometimes it's just a shift of focus. That's our entire conversation. Yeah. It was a shift of focus. You said something earlier, but we're in survival mode. And I kind of feel like we've spent so much of our life playing the game this certain way and then all of a sudden god goes okay i'm gonna change it and he pulls the rug out from underneath us and when i say god you know i use that word loosely just depending on but i just feel like the grand poopa up there you know says nope we're gonna change the game and i'm like wait you know so i kind of feel that that kind of relates to what you just said like things like we get used to doing things a certain way and then it's like they're gonna change and it's hard to switch all that process and so like the vessel of love what does that yeah what what does does that that mean yeah, in you, how do you embody it? It's almost like yeah. when you're living your design or you're just being yourself, this is a theme that plays out. Like you move through shock, failure and challenges. And like you have an effect on everyone you meet, whether you're aware of it or not. Some people might feel really pulled towards you. Some people might feel cho- shocked and triggered, but it's almost like, yes, yes, they might feel. And this energy is not bad, right? But how we see it, you know, if our, we have stories of belonging, stories of fitting yeah. in, that might be very hard because you're basically meant to stand out and that can feel so incredibly isolating. Yeah, definitely. So, so what are other vessels? What are other vessels that people have? Like the vessel vessels? of love is, yeah, um, The vessel right? of love is composed by like the four gates, the 25, the 46, the 10, and the 15. And all of those gates are in your identity center the identity, the direction center. This is like where, when we talk about like the depths of human design, this is where the seat of the soul, you have the power to remind us of our own inner truth, of our own direction. And some people might fight towards it. They're like, no, this is not who I am if they've been living out of alignment. But those that are gravitating towards you, recognize your wisdom or like, please tell me more, Stacey. Shock me back (laughs) into my life kindly. I mean, (laughs) I love that. If that feels good like to that. you, like, <laughs> and like you have the capacity to, you know, when you're really focused, connected to someone, to your clients, to invite them into like 
the beauty of life, love of the body, love of the extremes, like of like people come in all shapes and sizes, all conditions, but they all that. are worthy of love. That's what you remind them. And you yeah. embody this already. Like, do, are you feeling this? I can see it in you. I do. I do. My judgment kicks in for myself, but I do. But I, yes, definitely. I can definitely relate to that. I think that, I mean, everybody's equal. I feel like everybody's equal. So I just, except for me. <laughs> except kidding. for you. You know, yeah. you know you it, I'm just like so this, hard right? on myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's also like, you're able to embrace humankind's, you know, in all its extremes. You know, that's what the gate is 15. This is the gate that we're going into this week, actually, the extremes. How do we embrace the extremes and rhythms and patterns and the differences? Hold on to the beauty of that. How do we heal and grow through lo- learning through different people, learning through different paths and directions? And the the vessel of love is something that you just are. And it's not something you have to try. We might push it, you know, we might reject it because we, we're not used to seeing that in ourselves. But again, it's all remembering like, okay, I'm safe to be here right now. I'm safe to recognize myself. That's funny because the last few days I've been saying, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. Like I just keep repeating that to myself when I'm in a situation because we had a lot of social events and stuff we were doing this past week. And I came across somebody and then something else I was doing and they were saying, somebody told me to say, I'm okay, I'm okay. And it was working for them. I'm like, okay. So I've kind of just been saying that and then then I'll forget it, you know, And but it just seems like, okay, I was okay. <laughs> so yeah. it's funny you say that because that's definitely something that's happened this week as far as. Yeah, yeah. And like something that I've noticed with Define Heart Centers, specifically that affirmations help it helps to recalibrate this energy that wants to prove that has, you know, you have the energy to fight, to initiate yourself into new heights, but you know, there's also a tenderness in it. It's tender of like, what if we're not being seen and received? What if by being so different, I'm isolated. But if we do look at, if we allow our logical minds to guide us, because the logic is beautiful as well. It's like, if we look at everybody who's been successful or who's made a big impact, like celebrities, authors, you know, activists, they dare to be different. But the, in between the middle, they were chastised for it. They were rejected. But it wasn't until they were successful on their own that people lifted them up. Right. Yep. Yeah. And you just, yeah. So, you know, when we're starting to really embrace our power, there's like this fire that just wants to explode. And then there's tender, there's this softness of like, what if I'm not loved? You are love incarnate. What the hell does that mean? But what do, what if I don't get love from others? And we can hold and that. Mainly it's my love for myself. Like what if I don't love myself? It's like the whole grand answer to a lot of this, I think is like just accepting and loving myself. Like no words, no explanation, just, just be, just like. Exactly, so. exactly. Like our wholeness is not something we can measure by our achievements. It's not our shadow expressions is not our we came into this world whole but somewhere along the way with conditioning with being human we felt unwhole because we started measuring ourselves against yes yeah that's <laughs> the scale right the scale, scale the scale yeah. is always going to be there but yeah. you know whenever you feel like you're tipping off too much on the other side you'll be like okay Maybe today I'm tip off this side. Maybe today I'm feeling so proud of myself and there's nothing wrong with it. And then maybe the other day you're like, I am tired of life. I'm feeling bitter. How can I hold this? Because I'm human. Instead of thinking I should, whenever we notice the I shoulds, I have to, that's usually and it's the outside coming to like, Ugh. it's like, okay, it's okay. How do we still ground into our bodies? Because a lot of times our bodies feel agitated. Our bodies feel unsafe. So it sends almost a signal to our minds. Like, how do you solve it? How do you solve it? Yes. Yeah. That anxious, that anxiety, you know, I feel that so much and then it does. So I do go into that kind of trying to fix it mode or, and then that just plays out in a whole different, it just looks so different outside than when it looks inside. So yeah. 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 So like somatic practices talking to someone, or sometimes I'm just like holding my feelings and the judgment. I'm like, okay, I feel like I should have been further. I feel like I should have met this deadline by now, but also I'm physically exhausted. Oh, okay. Maybe 
both can be true. Like I would have liked to meet this, but I also want to honor my body, honor where I'm at. Yes. You know, it's learning to hold this. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Learning to hold this discomfort and still be like, I'm okay. I'm okay. Yep. That's that's my new theme song. (laughs) I'm okay. I used to say, I don't care. I don't care. But I'm like, of course you care. Mm -hmm. I used to be, you know, I catch myself saying, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. But I'm like, I do care. That's the whole thing. So that didn't really help out much, but just like, I'm okay. That, that kind of is the easier thing to accept and to resonate with. Yeah. 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 Do you trust yourself? Um, yes. In certain situations and, um, yeah, I would say yes. I feel like I know the best thing for myself. Yeah. I mean, I do, yeah. I do trust myself. It's just like making the choice to, to do not necessarily the right thing, but to do that. Yeah. Does that make yeah. sense? Like totally, yeah. totally. <clears throat> you know, you don't even have to explain sometimes, you know, if you want to add to your affirmations, I'm okay. I trust myself. How does that yeah. land in your body? you know, right now it feels good, but I can tell you probably before this podcast or before right now, I would have, or, you know, I would have, that, that would have got a reaction from me because I trust myself. But now you're, you've reminded me of all the things, all the reasons I have to trust myself. So you yeah. just kind of reminded me of those things. So yeah, that's, so right now, I mean, cause I, like you said, I mean, I resonated with so much of the positive that you said. I just forgot it. <laughs> I just forgot all. I just did forgot all about those things by looking at all the other stuff, the negative yeah. stuff. So, and that's okay. That's just part of being human. I think we just need to remind ourselves of that because when we notice we're out of alignment, it's almost like for me, I go into this like shock. Like, okay, how do I control? How do I strategize? How do I like problem solve? And it's completely almost like going the other direction because I'm like well the yes. whole point of doing this is to be more aligned but my approach is completely misaligned because I thought yes. this is what I had to do and it's just part of being human you know sometimes we try things and it's like oh well I guess that didn't work look what that happened and then when we're reminded of our truth which is what you've carried with you you know even when you yes. know from all yes. these years until now it's like it's been there you know the your love for yourself has been there. The judgment was there as well. <laughs> it's just a yes. matter of like, like you said, tipping the scale, like, okay, notice the judgment coming. And also how do I come back to myself? Right. You're I there. I get less of yeah. such a, such, so I don't get stuck there. That's, yeah. You don't get stuck there. It doesn't keep you small and your personality sun, which is like the main energy that we see, the energy that you're aware of is like the gate of the spirit of self. And that's in your identity center. And this is all about universally universal, unconditional love through acceptance. So when we reflect that and you see how accepting you are of so many different people of how they live their lives, and then we turn into ourselves, there might be some tension and fear. Yeah. Do you accept yourself? It's a lot easier though coming like it's a lot easier when when you do it like so you accepted them, so just turn it towards yourself. Yes. Or like a friend, you know, imagine you are the friend that's going to yourself. Yeah. And you might be able to see through that. Yeah, it's it's a different, it's a different I'm not quite familiar with that. You know, I mean it's like if there's kind of a little bit of a hollowness to it right now. I don't haven't put a but yeah I mean it makes sense it just it takes some time yeah same here same yeah, here when I reaction so yeah when I first started to you know learn to judge myself less so much of it has been like oh okay you feel like you should be fair you feel like you should know that and like logically my mind was trying to basically help me logic my feelings away my fears away yeah And while it worked when I was going up, I had to cope this way to, you know, survive, to live right now. I can feel it in my body. It's not okay. So again, noticing the tension and like, oh, okay, can we pull it apart with curiosity? And it's okay if you don't see it all the time. Again, as projectors, we see everybody clearly, but ourselves. Yeah, it's true. And, And people don't really, I find that people are either afraid to tell me 
yeah, or, yeah. or to redirect, not necessarily redirect me, but afraid to call me out on it. Like, right. so I sometimes I have, you know, I have to figure that out on my own because, yeah. I mean, so. which is so daunting, right? It's something else that I've noticed, like as a projector, we're here to guide energy. So how do we guide if there's no one around us, if there's no energy for us to guide? And then when we start with ourselves, like, how can we trust that as we take care of ourselves, as we take the next step, people will come along the way that will support our process and we'll support them. We don't know how that looks like, but you're here to basically show people what does it mean to love ourselves unconditionally? And that's perhaps your biggest lesson and wound in this lifetime. I get it. Yeah it's a lot easier to see that now like kind of every yeah I can see it so. but I do I see where that's been the struggle and that's what's kept me out of alignment so definitely like uh, that's what we learn it sounds so easy <laughs> yeah I know it's always easier than done but that's how we learn right when we're out of alignment that's when we see our shadows sometimes that's the only way we heal generational traumas that's how we hear yeah. heal like the things in our collective it's through the shadow expressions you know that's how we mutate that's how we get closer to our higher selves yep and not view them as mistakes yeah they're not <laughs> yeah. mistakes even though it feels like it because of the stories we tell because of the conditioning but when we're able to like find the path back to ourselves and be like oh I've always trusted myself I've made decisions that were supportive. Yep. You reminded me of that. Thank you so much. I'm glad. I forgot all that. So it's yeah. Let that expand in your body. Don't push it away because I think sometimes we we feel we push, we push away and we want to feel the bad only. (laughs) No, I've always known my connection with human design. It was just like taking that the next step and and so and all of that feels definitely like you know, I could read it all day long, but reading it still coming through my brain and having to translate. And that's, I still wasn't getting it. You know, sure. I know, I knew all the numbers and the, what you call it, stuff like that, but just that switch in the gear. Yeah. Just had to find its way to you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm and crazy. You're not crazy. You are <laughs> spirit. You're love in itself. And you, you have this connection, even when you feel disconnected to yourself, this is a connection others see in you. This is a connection people gravitate to you. It's also the archetype of the healer of the priestess. You know, I, you know, there must be a reason you went into massage therapists of all things. Yeah. 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 And, you know, when, when I, and that makes sense, you know, I mean, I've known that, that, that I have the healer in me and stuff like that, but, you know, just, whether I wanted to see it at times so yeah yeah the like bitterness, your connection to the bitterness kind of came out. Yeah, yeah yeah and like don't don't feel that the bitterness means that we're out of alignment sometimes the bitterness is like oh okay it's popping up it could be our own stories leading us to bitterness when always yeah, yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure it's always that yeah. it's always that it, it, yeah and sometimes you know, maybe I wanted to be there or whatever I don't know but so. yeah but yeah. How are you feeling? We moved through so much. I can feel like I'm processing, digesting it. <laughs> same here. Same here. I mean, definitely I've got a lot to, to think about. I'd love to go back and watch this podcast yeah. too and stuff, but I definitely, um, yeah, I, like it's, I don't really have words for it because I feel like we yeah. already kind of said them all, but I'm lighter, so much lighter. Like, yeah. I don't know if you can I tell. Can feel it. Yeah, like, I can yeah. feel it. I can feel it. And it's okay if like, sometimes we might go back to those moments when we're tense because our body is learning. Our minds are learning to be like, oh, I can relax into myself and it's okay. You know, maybe watching this video a couple of times, but also just, you know, going back to our bodies, like, I'm okay now. How does it feel? Like, is my shoulder lighter or my like, hips yeah. really good? Yeah. Remember this feeling, you know, like, try to remember this feeling. So, yeah. 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 Cause again, it wasn't hard, right? <laughs> not at all no not at all I mean 
I don't feel it. I'm just, I'm glad to know that you're a projector. I mean, I was, I don't think I ever asked and I don't know if you have it on your, if you I do, I, d- I do have it like in my about page, but like a lot of people just read about the gate. So it, it's okay. <laughs> well, I did read your about page, but I must have like skipped over that for some, some reason, but yeah. And mm-hmm. I didn't know you had like seven centers open. So, so you kind of can relate to that, like all that stuff coming in. So, well not kind of you can <laughs> yeah so. yeah yeah and like not having a I don't have my defined identity center so so much of like who am I that was a question I asked and I I don't know until I'm in an environment I don't know until I hop onto this job and see if I want it or not right but that's probably a good thing too though because you can be who you want to be right or does that change with that oh, it does with it being does. Open, like, does it change can it change because I'm like I know mine does not change like I am right with mine being defined I am who I am but with yours being open so does that it change change? it's almost like different parts of me come out with different people and you know it could be fashion it could be my intonation it just comes out and it I don't know if it feels good I stay in relationship with those people or you know stay in those places if it doesn't I'm like Mm -hmm. okay that's a sign (laughs) you've sampled this time to release it and that's been such a Ah, like an exo when I was trying to hold on to my old corporate job trying to hold on to that title knowing that my pull of wanting to explore yoga wanting to explore coaching wasn't because I was not able to commit to one thing it was because I was being guided right yes yeah tiny shifts yeah yeah yep big shifts though in the grand scheme of things like totally changing jobs and stuff like that but to to realize that that being guided yeah I don't think I had that word earlier when you asked me how it felt to change but it's definitely being guided to to change yeah yeah Mm. what are you holding now (laughs) no I'm just like just the thought I'm like I don't want to take up too much of your time or whatever I'm just like Mm -hmm. yeah I've enjoyed every minute of it though it's been Mm -hmm. great Thank you. Th- thank you for trusting me to be part of this process and you showing up with, you know, all the vulnerability, sharing your fears. And I know a lot of people can relate to, you know, being that spot and we get there Hope so. often. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely, you made it easy. You made it very easy to, to process through. So. And then it's I'm all, it's all been within you. <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah. Yes, it has. And I knew it. I mean, like my brain knew it. It's just, yeah, you know. yes. It's like, we just needed our body and our spirit to, to be like, oh yes, here's a reminder. Reminded. Definitely. Yeah. But I'd definitely like to talk about, um, uh, my ear pods have got coming out. I'm, you know, I'm just, oh, you got slightly disconnected right now. I think so. Yeah. Oh, you're back. Are you there? Yes, okay. you're back. Yeah, I'm sorry. As I was afraid of, I knew if it fell out, I was afraid if I went to put back in, it would do that. But it happens. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. So I'll have to get back get with you and like get on your schedule and see if, you know, about doing coaching or something like that. Cause you're, I'm assuming your coaching does human design. It like incorporates yeah. human design in that. Yeah. I'd like to go explore a little bit further. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome. You're invited to <laughs> whenever Thank you, you want to. Not that you needed that. You could have just looked for it. But... <laughs> Is there any other question that you're holding? Anything you want to explore? No, I mean, I feel like I've got so much in my head right now. And I mean, because you we kind of, I mean, we went over like the one three, which was the big thing. And then the, the vessel of love, I'm glad you brought that up because that yeah. was, oh, the self-projected. So mm. the authority, yeah. is that, was my authority different? Because self-projected, I don't really understand that, but I don't yeah. think it's a lot of people are self-projected projectors. Are they? You are not a self-projected, you're an ego projected projector. Ego projected. Is, there, yeah. is self-projected a different? Slightly different. So the self-projected okay. has their identity center connected to their throat. So in a way they need okay. to speak their truth and able to hear it. You might okay. also like be able to speak your truth sometimes when you're feeling like chatty, you can record and you might feel it in your frequency. Like, Ooh, does this feel good to me? But for decision-making for authority, it's ego. It's about your heart. Okay. What does your heart want? Is my heart in it? Those questions are like your biggest guiding posts. Okay. Does my heart so that's want that? where the ego, that's the ego mm-hmm. projected and projected is just because I'm a projector. Yeah, pro- just because you're a projector, but being the channel 51, uh, 2551, the channel of initiation, you're here to like 
dive into new depths without needing to be invited because you're here to do something that people have not done before. No pressure. <laughs> no, okay, right. Thanks. Right, no pressure. But you I won't know, be doing that tomorrow, but I'll work on it. <laughs> right now. You might already be doing it without knowing. Maybe. Yeah. Does, yeah, maybe it doesn't always have to have an answer or <laughs> mm -hmm. exactly, yeah. exactly. I know your your one is like thirsty for answers, but also learning to hold the uncertainty and feeling safe with that too. Telling our body it's okay. I don't know the answer right now, but this is the direction I want to go. I want to. Like I want, I desire, I am affirmation, anything with your related to your ego, to your desires, that's your authority. Okay. So the desires your desires so that's perfect then, I can do that very easily <laughs> exactly and then noticing when the hijacking from the undefined mind or the crown or the questions come in to hijack your authority and be like eh, are you sure you want to do this is this a good idea at your age you know all those things that you know that might come. right and it's like Oof, okay okay I acknowledge that you can talk later but this is what my heart wants like grounding to the wisdom of your heart that's what my heart wants I like it yeah. So that's my question. That's why I could say just that's what my heart wants. Not really even a question because at that point, it's just like reminding myself that that's what I want. Yeah. And that feels good in my body. And like sometimes it helps just closing our eyes and like grounding. That's what my heart wants. And letting that feeling expand in our body helps soften or even like quiet the noise of the the questions the pressure that we've amplified but are you sure where are you going to get money what is it you know all those things that are really great at times but not mm -hmm. at the moment when you just want to connect to the wisdom of your heart and that inner that trust that cannot in be explained yeah let it expand and the more we do that it's almost like your body becomes it knows that it's safe. So it can hold that frequency. So it can hold that recognition in yourself from others without feeling like, but I need to do more. I need to prove more. Right. That makes everything okay in the moment. Yeah. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, I think that was it. I mean, uh, because that those are just the things that you know I knew that they had to have some explanation behind them or whatever. But other than that, is there anything that stands out that we didn't go over on my chart that you think would be important or for me to know? No, I think you've got this. Like knowing that you amplify those energies, and it's okay to feel the judgment, the bitterness. It's okay to feel that, but also there are ways that we went through that, like ah, connected to ourselves. Yes. You've Most got this. Yeah. You've always had this. You're like, at 54, I should have. I'm like, but you're already doing it. <laughs> True. I, yes. And there was a knowing inside me that knew yeah. that it was. But you just had the, to kind of like connect the mind with that knowing. Sometimes that's what we need, yeah. right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And just get back to the, yeah, to the knowing of the positive stuff. Because, yeah, I was kind of hung up in the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the negative and all that other kind of stuff, making sure, you know, all that was resonating with me way more than the positive stuff so yeah. I think that's the biggest thing is I'm just gonna like sit back and kind of and just remember all, all the things yeah and so, like this conversation was you know 90 minutes but new things might come up later things are bubbling right for now. sure things are bubbling it's Most gonna definitely. start coming up so be gentle if there's no mental energy you can release it you know sometimes you might have a lot of energy to like dive into rabbit hole sometimes you might feel exhausted <laughs> When you recognize that, you're like, oh, okay, maybe it's time to shut down my brain. <laughs> right. And then, you know, come back to it again, beautiful center, amplifying it. But then it's like, oh, okay, I think it's like, I mean, it's my, my thoughts are being um, cross wired because it's too much. It right. happens to me Overload all the time. Or... Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, time to disconnect. Goodbye. And I feel less guilty about it instead of like, why haven't I figured it out? Yeah. Yes. It, that helps me. Um, I'm a big procrastinator and stuff because I get so caught up in my thoughts and stuff like yeah. that. Sometimes it's yeah. just, yeah. Maybe you're not procrastinating. Maybe that's also your body saying like, "Ooh, you know, do something else, Stacy." Maybe yeah. so because you know, I do kick it out of the ballpark when I end up having to do it. Like it's like yeah. when I finally get to it, I'm like, "Well, that's just the way I do things." That's you yeah. Know, I procrastinate, and then I can. Otherwise, you know, if I had too much time to think about it or too much time to do it, I mean, it would. I would have like blah all over the page. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because like you know? your first line was like, "There's so many ways to do one thing," <laughs> and your yes. third line is like, "Let's test it out as well." So you know, 
trust the process easier said than done but you know with practice yep. this dance will become easier yes and and it is it's just it, you're this is integrated a lot of the things like you said i was already doing this is just integrating that wherever those little empty spots were whatever that i needed to connect like we were saying it so yeah and there will be i'm sure many more aha moments so yeah but, Oh. Thank you so much. I really life changing is almost as well as when I found out that I was an empath. You know, this like there are a few things that we hit on that were like I could feel the weight coming off my shoulders just because it, it just makes sense. You know, so I appreciate that so much, mm. and that Thank you get me. <laughs> Thank you for allowing us to be part of your process. Definitely, definitely. I hope that it helps somebody, some, another one three out there. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to the Whole and Unleashed podcast. If you're feeling pulled to get into action and want to connect within, check out the Align and Embody journal on wholeandunleashed.com. You'll also find resources on mindset, human design, and archive for past episodes of this podcast. And if you enjoyed this episode, please share, leave a comment or review on iTunes and Spotify. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a wonderful day wherever you are.